On this video, I'm gonna provide seven tips to tackle spasticity. These are the same tips that we use in our clinic to help our patients at the MS Center. Seven tips to beat spasticity coming at you right now. Howdy, Aaron Boster here with the Ohio Health MS Center, speaking to you today about spasticity and seven tips to beat it up. In fact, I'll throw in a bonus tip at the end of the video. If this is your first time tuning in, thank you for coming. Please subscribe to our channel and click the notifications so that you don't miss any of our new content. Exactly is spasticity. Think about it this way. When you want to bring the coffee cup to your mouth, the arm has to bend at the elbow and the bicep muscle has to shorten to bring your arm forward. Meanwhile, the tricep has to relax. You don't tell the tricep to relax. You just bring the coffee to your face. The spinal cord and brain facilitate the orchestration of contracting one muscle and relaxing another. This is done for you. When you've had damage to the brain or the spinal cord, sometimes the message for the tricep to relax when the bicep contracts doesn't get there. So in essence, your body is trying to bend your arm this way and bend your arm that way at the same time. The result is a tug of war with your own muscles and that's spasticity, which manifests in three ways. A limb that is hard to bend, a spasm, which is a bouncing of the muscle or a painful cramp like a Charlie horse. Now, unfortunately, amongst people with MS, spasticity is very, very common upwards of 70% experiencing it at some time. And so I want to bring you seven tips to beat spasticity. Number one is to stretch. Guys, you got to stretch. Seriously. I want you to stretch three times a day. Think about it this way. When you wake up before you exit your bedroom, stretch out. Now you want to think about stretching as follows. You have to hold the position for at least 30 seconds or your muscles never going to figure out what it is you want to do. I want you to stretch for a few minutes when you wake up before you exit your bedroom. Then I want you to stretch a second time when you enter your bedroom before you go to bed. That's in the beginning of the day and the end of the day. Then I simply need you to stretch once during the course of the day. Stretching has no value the next day. It has profound value right now. And you'll find that stretching like this when you wake up partway through the day and before bed has a lot of benefit. I want you to try it out. Tip number two, stay well hydrated. All too often, uh, we avoid water for various reasons. You'll find in the setting of spasticity that if you're dehydrated, you risk making it worse. So load up on your water and you'll find that it helps. Number three, identify and treat nitises. What does that mean? If you're constipated, if you have a urinary tract infection, if you have an infection of your toenail, you're gonna find that your spasticity is much, much worse. Addressing issues like constipation and frequent urinary tract infections can have a profound benefit to controlling and improving your spasticity. Number four, many people that develop severe spasticity have a limited range of motion, for example, in their legs. And they may find that over time, it's actually hard to extend their leg fully, which keeps them sort of in a, in a bent position. This can be very problematic because it can put pressure on dependent areas of your body and it's hard to shift. I need people in this situation to look at the dependent areas every single day. That's typically looking at your tuchus, your bottom, or having someone else visualize it to make sure that there's no permanent red spots or skin breakdown. The same things with the heels. This is very, very important to avoid the cubitus ulcers. You wanna make sure that you're padding dependent areas. And if it's hard for you to move on your own, you need assistance in doing so. This is an important tip to prevent downstream problems which can occur in the setting of spasticity, such as decubitus ulcers. Five, movement is key. The stiller you are, the stiffer you get. And I want you to seek out activities that help you move around and stay loose and flexible. Explore things like water, aerobics, water Zumba. Check out yoga or Tai Chi. These are fantastic ways to combat spasticity. Number six, break up long stretches of sitting still. If you're gonna take a two hour car ride, you may exit the car stiff as all get out. What I want you to do instead is plan accordingly. 
travel one hour, stop your car, exit your car, stretch, walk around, get limbered up, get back in your car and finish the trip. In a similar fashion, you may find that sitting at your keyboard for three hours results in stiff legs and cramps and spasms. Well then don't do that. Set a timer and every half an hour to hour, get up and stretch and move around. Stretch throughout your day and break up long periods of sitting to combat your spasticity. Number seven, don't get too cold. Cold ambient temperatures increase spasticity substantially. I live in sunny Columbus, Ohio, and it's pretty darn cold here for a good portion of the year. Try to stay bundled up, keep yourself as warm as possible. You'll find that when you do, your muscles are much less stiff, you have less cramps and less spasms. And now for a bonus tip about oral baclofen. There are many oral medicines that people can take to help their spasticity. And one of the most commonly used medicines is called baclofen. Now, baclofen has a five hour half-life which means that after about five hours, it's not gonna work very well. This can become very problematic if you're taking it two times a day, once in the morning, once before bed. Well, that means that the entire second half of your day, you have no baclofen on board. So talk to your provider and figure out a dosing regimen, either three or maybe even four times a day to space out the oral baclofen so that you have good antispasmodic coverage all day long. And there you have it, guys. Eight total tips to combat spasticity. I want to hear from you. Please leave your comments and questions below and let me know if this video was helpful or which tips seem to be the best or maybe you thought of one that I didn't. Once again, my name is Aaron Boster with the Ohio Health MS Center, helping you beat up multiple sclerosis.